Hey everyone, welcome to M2F Story. Today I am going to share with you Mom, Dad, I Want to Be Girl Part 1, written by Jane Hudson. So if you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. And check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash M2F Story. My family had always been good to me, but today am I in the middle of Hell Week. I tired to end myself. Why I had always wanted to be a woman, but could not face the guilt anymore. I had been like this since I was very little, wearing my older sister June and my mum Mary clothes. I am now 14 and just wanted to die. I had been so racked with the shame and guilt all week, I had been going down and down until I hit the floor. My dad John found me dressed in my sister's summer flower print dress in my room. By luck only, he forgot some paperwork and came back home. He is a works manager at a wood mill. He heard a loud bump from my room, found me on the floor. I had taken mom's sleeping pills. I was rushed to hospital. After being pumped out, I was coming around, I felt like fool. As I awoke, mom dad sis was all there. Mom spoke first. My poor baby, we read the letter you left. Why did you not tell us Dave? I could not answer her. I just started crying and sobbing. Mom hugged me and my sister hugged me too. Then all three of us started crying. I could not hug back as my arms was strapped down, just in case my dad was just holding back the tears as well. The doctor came in and told my family that it was a close run thing, that this was not a cry for help, but a true attempt at ending myself. My dad asked what would be the best thing to help their son. The doctor Emma's Janice Longford said, well, Mr. Williams, your son seems to have gender problems. I think that a psychiatrist who can deal with this should see and talk to him. Well, my family talked to the doctor about me and what should be done. Then she made a call to the psychiatrist doctor, John Patton, who was to be a great help to me over the next few years. I was to be put on a 24 watch, but that now my secret was out, I felt relived. I knew now my family cared what a fool I was to think they would not. I laid in bed tubes, coming into my arm, feeling sorry for myself and feeling bad that I put my loving family through this. Then my lovely, beautiful mom, a woman I would love to be, came in. She at five foot seven inches was just my ideal of womanhood. Her blonde, soft, long hair framing her lovely, kind face, her blue eyes sad, yet also happy that I was alive. God, what a selfish fool I have been. My baby, my dear, sweet child, I always knew you was not a rough and tumble boy, but a sweet, kind child. Now I see you are more feminine than any of us thought. Mom, I said, hush, my baby. I have something for you, my dear. I think you will love it. My sister June had peeked around, though, with a big smile on it. Is it okay to come in with it now? Yes, dear, Mom said. What going on here, I thought. I was so to find out. My sister June, a great kid two years older that me a bit of a tomboy well was, until she discovered boys that changed in the last 18 months stood there. About my mom's height short but feminine blonde bob, blonde hair runs in our family. She was in short black skirt, tight black top, and real nice black shoes, but not too high. Mom don't like her in too high a shoe, about three inches. Her boobs not big, but a nice B cup, I think. I can see why her boyfriend Bob likes her so much. Luckily, he a real nice guy. Tall, dark hair, good looking, and a real sweet boy. I fancy him too, another thing I felt shame over. Dad was not far behind. He was about five foot nine and blonde and a nice, quite family man. Grinning madly, she said, there you go, sis, for you. She gave me a package inside was the most beautiful pink lace trimmed nightgown. I just burst into tears. I was so shocked, but also happy. Gee, you cry at the drop of a hat, just like a girl, in fact, more than I do. My dear sis said with a big smile on her face. Mom spoke. Now the doctor said you won't be able to wear it tonight, but in the next couple of days, they don't want you moving around too much. Well, I was not going anywhere with these straps on. Well, the following day, I was helped out of the hospital gown by Lucy, a lovely black nurse who'd been so sweet to me, and into my fabulous nightgown. I felt like I was on cloud nine. During the day, I had my first visit from Dr. John Patton. He asked me questions, and I answered as best I could. He then listened to me as I went on about how I feel, I felt more at ease with myself, with myself, as we talked. I have had to do a lot of thinking in this bed and had a lot of growing up to do. I now knew that I was going to live and as a woman. No matter how hard it is, if you are willing to end yourself, then a bit of hassle is well worthwhile being what I want to be a woman. In the afternoon, Mum and Sis visited. June gave me a lovely white teddy bear I called him Snowdrop. 
My sis said, why call him after American MPs she used to love war films told you a right tomboy. I always loved chick flicks, but tried to hide it. I told them both how I felt. Mum said, okay, my dear daughter, if that what you want. Better a lovely live daughter than a dead son. I started crying again, sis said, don't start, you will start us all of. I did all three of sobbing again, G. Kleenex will make a year's profit in a week with us three. In a week time, I was allowed out of hospital. I left the hospital wearing a cute plaid skirt just above my knees, a white top, and a nice fur-trimmed winter coat that was my sister until she grew out of it. I wore this as it was just over two weeks before Christmas. My hair was not long enough to style yet, but I was wearing a real cute page boy blonde wig. My new smart shoulder bag felt just so right over my shoulder. I had a pair of low heel black shoes. It was cold out, a frost was still about at 9.30 a.m. My mum and sister took me out an arm in each arm. The doctor wished me well and gave me a little peck on the cheek, I blushed. Then we walked out the door of the hospital. I felt the light make up on me, the feel of lipstick made me feel all girl. The cold went right up my skirt. It was cold, but it was a real girl feeling. Yes, I was scared, yet so happy as well. Dad pulled up in Ford Focus and we got in. Leaving Bristol Hospital, we joined the busy traffic onto the M32, then the M5 towards Weston Supermare. We lived in a three-bedroom house in Worrell on the edge of Weston. Mom had told our friends and neighbors what was going on. I was nervous as hell getting out of the car, but my friend Becky, a girl I helped with history and she helped me with math, was there. As was some of her friends Alice and Louise, I have always gotten on with girls better than boys. Becky was more of a tomboy than my cis football running and judo. She was near on a black belt. She showed me some moves. I learned some, but I don't like hurting people. Alice and Louise were both into sports and belonged to the same judo club. But they was a bit more girly than Becky. Becky was wearing a skirt. I don't believe it. It's always jeans or trousers. I did not notice at first because I was overwhelmed by it all. In fact, all the girl were. June told me later if I wanted to be a girl and wear skirts, they would too to welcome me even Becky. I cried at that again. June said, oh no, here we go again. Inside the house, my mom made us tea and we sat and chatted. The girls said about school and some of the jerks who may give me a hard time. John Bader's was one a real bully. But Becky said, I give him what for if he starts remember last year when he was taking money from little kids and I stopped him. Then him and his three mates had a go at me. Well, I got a black eye bust tooth and lots of cuts and bruises and a bust thumb little finger on right hand. But once I put down John and his nasty sidekick Pete, the others just cleared off and he got worse than I did. I did remember it was the talk of the school. He was very quiet about a girl fighting of four louts and giving him a second pasting. It was nothing he wanted to talk about. He a lot bigger than Becky, but she took him each time. You're my friend, by the way. What do you call yourself? Why, Dawn, I said. Cute, she said. If anyone has a go at you, they will have me to deal with. She was as kind as she was tough and always stood up for the underdog. When she left school, she joined the police and very good copper she was too. I started tear up again. I felt so happy. I still felt so weak and tired and soon was off to bed. I slept in my own bed for the first time a happy girl. It would not be until the morning that I noticed that was room had gone through a feminine makeover as well. Morning burst through the windows. I had left the curtains open. I felt a little better than I did last night, a bit of a headache, but nothing much. Mom would give me a headache pill when I went downstairs. I now noticed my room, wow. It was beautiful, I must have been real out it when I went to bed not to notice this. My bed was all white lace teddy bears and dolls all over the room. I saw it was done in a lovely pink color. I had a lovely wardrobe, a vanity with large makeup mirror under the window. A girl's room, 100%. I still had my TV DVD computer, but everything else was different and so feminine. I was so happy I started crying again. Mom came in, what the matter, she said. I told her it's my room. Mom said, young lady, don't you like? I said, like it, I love it. I am so happy. Thank you, mom and dad and sis too. She told me, you silly goose, come on, get up. You have a big day ahead of you, young lady. Young lady, that was music to my ears. I put my dressing gown, a pink one, of course, over my lovely white lace-trimmed nightgown. It was on the bed last night. And I just put it on after washing. I went off to the bathroom. I had to pee. I did this sitting down. I would never stand again. After my shower and my removing the very little body hair I had, I went to my room. I picked out a pink bra, a training one. But my first pink knickers, a pink short flared skirt, a pink top, okay, I love pink. 
Sis say, even by girl standards, I am a real sissy girl. Short socks that go with my pink trimmed trainers. I did my makeup light nothing over the top. Mom said I was good at makeup. Well, I've been doing it behind people back for years. I brushed my wig out and put it on. I looked like a girly 14-year girl. I put on a jean jacket that June gave me. Then I went downstairs to my family. As I walked down the stairs, mom, dad, sis was at the bottom. They all clapped and said, I look fabulous, very sweet and feminine. I blush and giggled, mom said, just like a girl. Once we had breakfast, dad said, right, ladies, we are off to the mall at Cribs Causeway, then lunch at Burger King. I knew you girls would like that. Then tonight dinner at a very nice Italian restaurant in Clifton. We all plied into the car. I held my sister hand, June squeezed my hand back. I was nervous, but so happy now. We drove down the motorway, Dad, listening to Radio 2, boring, but Dad liked it. June made a face to say, Dad music stinks, but I did not care I was now a girl, and I always would be. We got to Junction 17, the turn off to crib. Because way was packed, coming up to Christmas, it was always the same. We took a little while to get to the car park, and then it took a while to park up, but we did in the end. I got out of the car, boy was I scared, but June held my hand and smiled at me. Mom said, don't worry, dear, you'll be fine, you look great. June chipped in, great she a fox, we'll have to fight the boys of her with sticks. I smiled and thought I wish that was true. Dad just smiled at his two girls. I walked with my sis into the mall, dumb name calling it that. But it got some nice shops, nor very big, not a lakeside, a blue water, or meadow hall. But it was okay. Went in by the Marks and Spencer's entrance. Mum took us towards the shoes, for mum they were great. But there was only one or two June or I liked. But I tried on a pair of three-inch courts. IT was my first time as a girl trying on shoes in a large public store. I felt just great I was living as I always wanted to live. We had a good look around Mark's mum got herself a skirt, a pair of black trousers, black top. We want to around some younger girls' shops. Well, we was off like dogs out of the trap. We had a ball trying on tops, skirts, trousers, jeans, laughing and giggling together. I had got over my being scared and was fully in to being Dawn. I just loved being Dawn. Poor old dad being dragged by three females, one of which was new to being female and just mad to shop. He a good sport, but for a normal guy, shopping is like having teeth pulled there. He was with us three being bored out of his skull. But he was happy to see me happy. He did not want to see his only son become a girl, but he would rather have a live new daughter than an old dead son. So he was happy. I was happy daddy, such a sweetie. I just loved him to bits. After doing the whole of the mall, we went over to Burger King. We walked into the restaurant and ordered our meals no size up for Mum June or me dad. Well, he had super size the lot. Bacon double whopper. Men love to stuff their face us girls have to watch our figures. That's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you do, then be sure to subscribe for the next part of this story. And show your support on Patreon.